Welcome friends to Tank Tap, the podcast all about video games and beer. I'm one of your hosts, Ben, here with Adol. Hey. And Lucy. Hello. And returning guest, Adam. Hello. Hello, everybody. Should we open some drinks up and get going? No. <laughs> oh, yeah. why not, Adam? What are you drinking this evening? Because I've already opened my classic oh. cola. Mm. Hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> 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 have to be yeah. very very explicit about that, that co- I, I basically like come on here to, yeah i basically come on here to ruin your format so <laughs> we do that every week anyway. yeah, just just swig the coke as you do it perfect <laughs> uh, say that, we have a format yeah <laughs> yeah but beers and games i come with no beers and possibly might not talk about any games <laughs> we'll see <laughs> <laughs> um lucy what are you gonna be drinking this week um some beers i think i'm gonna start with one from the colonel Ooh. Um, and this is a beer de saison cider apple 5.9 percent what they've done is cider apples from tom oliver Fermented on fresh wort and blended with saison, so that's interesting. Nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, a classic yeah. kernel giving you very little information. Yeah, um, I just wanted something simple but good, so I picked up a few kernels. And spoilers for the next beer, white and true. So nice. <laughs> Going back to the classics this week. Nice, good, good. That's it. it needed sometimes. Good. Uh, Adol, what are you uh, opening up first? Uh, I'm gonna go for the Wild Beer Peel Breaker Grapefruit Session IPA because I wish it was still summer. Nice. Mm-hmm. Peel Breaker with the grapefruits on the tin. Uh, nice. It has. It's. Zesty grapefruit and piney, a West Coast session IPA enriched with grapefruit juice, zestiness, and full of piney Simcoe hops, a citrus refresher. Brilliant, nice. Uh, again, very small amount of information for um, for everybody, uh, and that will continue uh, through to the next beer as well. Um, sort of. Um, I'm going to start with a wiper and true, uh, Lucy. I haven't, oh. I haven't had time to go anywhere, so I just whipped round to the shop, round the corner, picked up a couple of beers, um, and they had new, new rebrews in from both uh, Arbor, which will follow, uh, and Wiper and True. Uh, I had a quick search on the site to see if I drunk or any of us had drunk either of these beers before on the podcast, and I could find mm-hmm. no reference. So sometimes, I, I, and I'm sure we must have had one of these beers. Um, on the show before but uh, occasionally our tags work really well occasionally they fail us uh, but yeah. I'm going to drink Kiwi Lilt which is a pale ale from White yeah. True which is absolutely a rebrew it's a beer I've had before but not for ages uh, it's 5.2% they do give a little bit of uh, flavour text a uh, light and refreshing pale ale showcasing three of New Zealand's magnificent hops Nelson Sovon Motuaka and Kahatu Abundant tropical fruits, floral notes, and sharp citrus are tied together with a subtle pine and fresh herbal qualities unique to hops of this region. That's it. That's what we get. It's pale ale. It's got a telephone. Hey, telephone yeah. on the front. Um, I uh, saw that one and I was like, mm, I'm going to pass. Oh, Kiwi wh- Lilt. Why? Mm. Kiwi Lilt was like, when I was looking for something, it was just yeah, so very simple. I was just like, even though I'm drinking a yeah, it just says on that was, you know, <laughs> brewed with apples in it. But <laughs> I, I, I need simplicity. I, I can't be dealing with any of this nonsense. Mm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I did see that one in the shop. Mm. I went for an amber ale instead. Oh, it's ooh, okay. I forgot to <laughs> check if we ever had it on the podcast. <laughs> well, why Prince nice. have been kind of uh, um, uh, quite good recently in. That they're doing lots of rebrews. You know, they've obviously got their core range. They're doing some new stuff. They're doing rebrews of older kinds of things. Um, I don't know whether it's sort of seasonal. At least Kiwi Lilt doesn't feel like a seasonal kind of beer. Uh, but uh, who knows? We could probably ask them. I'm sure they'd let us know. 
Um, but yeah, uh, we will come back around to you, Lucy, for the Colonel. Okay. To yeah. see how that beer is. I'm a bit scared because uh, oh. just smelling it smells exactly like cider. Does it? Yeah, it doesn't smell anything like a beer. It smells completely like a cloudy apple cider. It's a bit cold as well. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. do you like a cider, Adam? No, not really. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid I'm, I'm not. not <laughs> I'm not a massive cider fan. Yeah. Beautiful segue, Ben, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I got check. Something here checks. <laughs> Is is it possible that Adam could have a drink that's not vodka? <laughs> nah. Oh, well, other spirits maybe. Oh yeah. A bit of whiskey. Mm. Get a bit of whiskey before whiskey pretty yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, on the very podcast. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. I've since had quite a few of my friends try it, and they all hate it. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> because, because none of them are whiskey drinkers, uh, so it's mm. fair enough. I suppose hate is probably a strong word, but yeah, right. they've, they've all went. Nah, <laughs> not for me. Uh, I, I'm, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll I, I guess I'll have to visit then. <laughs> I mean, please do. Yes. Uh, back to the cidery beer, Lucy. Hmm. It is a cidery beer. It starts off like a saison, sort of. You know, got the. Very yeasty, very estery, very. It tastes, like, mm, I guess, a bit like a lambic. Okay. At the start, mm. and then towards the tail end, and it, just the final finish, it tastes like a cider. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a half and half Frankenstein beer. Interesting. Which I think I'm more swaying on the dislike than the like. Okay. But I need to. It, it's so fascinating because it, it's, it's like Jekyll and Hyde. It starts so much like, you know, oh, I'm going to get this really nice saison, like you think, um, you know, something that would just be great for the summer, very crisp, mm. very, very refreshing. And then uh, there creeps in that cider, which I'm not a massive fan of. That's a shame. Hmm. But as I said, I'm. Uh, I think it's far too cold at the moment because mm. I've just got it out of the fridge so maybe those um, flavours will blend a bit more after after I give it some time to warm up. But... Yeah, does it does it sort of uh, come across more as a beer in, in sort of its body? Um, you know, is it is it super kind of fizzy? Is it flatter? It looks a lo it looks really flat. It's not. It's not oh. at all. Um, it does look. <laughs> Quite um quite fat, but no. It, it's just kind of, kind of strange because you can't really see any carbonation. It sort of looks like cloudy cloudy straw colored, mm. um, and there's like no head at all. Um, but yeah, it's really it's really fizzy. It's really I don't think that's from hops. I think it's more, but it's like it looks like there's no combinate carbonation. Mm. It tastes it taste it it's got like the fizz of a cider. Okay. Um, mm. It's very fizzy, very effervescent in that sense. It's almost like but, an um, afternoon beer, isn't it? In the summer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you see if it gets better. Drink it some more. See if it gets a little bit better as it as it warms up. Uh, we'll roll. Yeah, around. I think I think I need to do that. But yeah. um, yeah, it's very tart. Mm. It's very um. I wonder how much apples they put in them. Three. But um. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it, it it's not my favourite right now. Let's see okay. if it grows. Fair. Fair. Mm. Um, Adam, we'll come to you. Yes. Uh, for the wild beer. It is fucking clear. Very clear. Yeah. <laughs> you can actually see my lips and mouth moving as I talk like a weird muppet through the glass. It's that clear. I mean, if you are listening, you're missing out on the show. But like, it's very clear. Look, look at these teeth. Yep, they're yellow. Still, um, um, <laughs> but it poured with a bit above two, maybe finger and a half head, but immediately dissipated. It's got this lovely, I mean, the tin didn't lie. It's a very zesty uh, citrus nose with a bit of pineiness underneath. 
Um, what I like is that even though it's more zest, which is gonna like, so it's it's still got a bit of citrus sweetness on the nose as well. Mm -hmm. Just sort of like it's it kind of smells like a little bit like grapefruit and tangerine mixed. Like there is that like still citrus but sweet that you just don't find um, with grapefruit. Yeah, and the piney sits underneath, and you don't really notice until the other smells fade. But there, it just helps bring the whole aroma together. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm. So, it's a session IPA. I think I forgot to tell you that it is a 4.7% session IPA. Okay. Um, so, it's, I mean, it, it's nice because usually session can be quite low ABV. And um, this, it tastes light. It feels light, but it, it still has just enough alcohol in it to to not make it too like thin and wet like mm. like watery um that pininess is there in droves it's really really nice it's a very again pretty light um strength wise but you've got basically the the simcoe hop is just kicking through you've got these lovely piney notes um which fade a bit and that re helps reveal that some of that bitterness is coming from again like zesty grapefruit so like heavy on the almost rind like it's get, it's got that extra bit of bitter or when you like when you're trying to zest something and you get a little too deep you get like you know you actually dig into the rind and have a little bit of that harsher bitterness it's, mm. it's got that just ever so much and it helps make me I it makes me feel like oh yeah I'm having a nice I'm more, more bitter beer but again the whole thing is really like it's not in your face so this is just like a note so it's quite easy to drink it starts uh very simcoe -y, very piney ends with a bit more of this the grapefruit notes going through um leaves my mouth not too wet not too dry um and the piney bitterness is very very lightly still there you know 20 seconds later but overall this is just like a a really tasty like i it's sessionable because again the taste isn't in your face but there is a lot of nuance going on there it's mm -hmm. very very interesting beer i think it might go quickly because it feels light and i'm really enjoying the taste and again it's not too long of a taste so it might just be like oh yeah that thing i liked that yeah um, just swig away and not sort of notice again mm -hmm. because the whole taste like while it's an interesting like taste curve the whole thing is much like my audacity waveforms today quite small <laughs> compared to normal nice okay cool um I, we'll jump into this kiwi little then um mm. it's got a really really sweet nose incredibly sweet you can see it's kind of almost middling to um the two sort of colors that we've had so far but maybe a little bit more orange it's very hazy you had a little bit of head dissipated quite quickly but incredibly sweet nose maybe a little bit of um orange and something just a little bit stronger in there as well maybe something like passion fruit mm. all the fruits mm. oh, it's such an all easy the orange fruits. Yeah, yes yes all the orange fruits um <laughs> that's exactly how it tastes it tastes like it's just filled with all the orange fruits um it's very very easy uh, it, it, it doesn't have much carbonation at all a um, mm. little bit kind of towards the end and it's got a little bit of a piney hit uh, right at the end as well which that carbonation kind of almost leads into um, but the, the, the nose and the flavour are really really similar you don't get quite the sweet hit in the flavour as you do in the nose but you're definitely getting sort of a little bit of orange maybe a little bit of passion fruit there's some light citrus in there as well maybe a little hint of lime just sort of sitting in the back and kind of maybe pulling that sweetness away that you get on the nose you know you're not getting that sort of lime in the nose which is why it's super sweet yeah, in the flavor that lime kicks in and just kind of undercuts that that sweetness a little bit maybe just taking away from that but again that lime as, as well helps to lead into that very very light sort of piney finish and it's 
it feels incredibly wet when you first drink it and just dries out really quickly um, so I'm sat here with this lovely lovely sort of you know kind of, I mean it does taste like lilt and <laughs> it does have a lot of kiwi in it, it, it it's as they right. sort of say but there's these other little flavors going on in there as well just to sort of pull it kind of all the way through up to this nice dry slightly piney finish so incredibly easy oh. as, Adam, as you say you don't you don't really notice sort of sipping away i think i'll be the same with this like it will dry me out and i'll just just reach for it without even thinking about it and, and, and knock it back i'm gonna put the rest into my glass just so i don't miss any um because it's very very nice and you wouldn't when you forget yeah. about any so. exactly yeah. exactly i'll reach for my my glass and go, oh it's all gone none left there'll be half a tin left oh, i've ruined <laughs> ruined my evening by forgetting uh no let's jump in then to games and we can sit on these beers for a little bit drink them as we go and enjoy them but adam as you are uh, guesting with us this week uh, i believe there's a couple of things that we have on the docket to talk about but uh, um, I know you're sort of coming in a bit free form this evening to sort Hello. of, you know, chat about some random stuff. Uh, well, do you want to start with anime or Crusader Kings? <laughs> <laughs> Your choice, sir. Your choice. What, what's uh, the difference? <laughs> right. um, one of them has more animation. <laughs> Oi. Uh, Both uh, probably have children eating their parents. Um, um Naked religions, yeah. they're probably in both. Well, we are we talking <laughs> anime or hentai now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, basically, what's hentai? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, well, why don't we start with Crusader King? Since I, I wrote about that for the site, that's up. Yeah, uh, that sounds good. My article, um, yeah, it, it's on uh, Game Pass, so. Again, one of the games that is very much in my wheelhouse that I've never really gotten to before until mm -hmm. now. Yeah, I've, I come from very much the, the Total War kind of side mm -hmm. of things, uh, particularly for Grand Strategy. I've played a lot of Total Wars over the years. Uh, and Crusader Kings 3 from Paradox is my first Crusader Kings game, but I've heard plenty of stories about uh, CK2 and 3. Uh, from various podcasts which have always been very intriguing because you see on like PC Gamer or like Waypoint and stuff like that uh, they they often do quite good write-ups of them of yeah, what, what happens mm -hmm. in their campaigns as they're playing them and why mm -hmm. they're interesting and I've always thought oh, I need to get to that one day and then I thought oh, Game Pass is a pound to... <laughs> well yeah. why not start uh, and so the, the write-up I did is my third game of uh, Crusader Kings uh, okay. You mean Crusader <laughs> yeah. Kings three? Yes, three? sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the first game was the tutorial, which you know, I didn't stick with very long after the tutorializing. Yes. Uh, I, I played basically till my first character died. Uh, Makes sense. Of, of old age, for, thankfully. <laughs> yeah. Which may or may not be oh, rare in this game. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten that for it. Uh, my second game did have some interesting back and forth but it was more about experimenting and then my third game had a really nice kind of narrative arc to it so far uh, that I'm looking forward to getting back to but I haven't actually played anymore since I started my write up um, and that is me playing as the, the Duke of Bohemia starting in 1066 and uh, trying to make my way up to the top basically from there mm. and the trials and tribulations and the things going wrong that happen in between um, but before I go for it, have any of you played Crusader Kings 3? Ben I think you have yes yes I've yeah. played a lot of Crusader Kings 3 it's I started on my the list <laughs> tutorial and I was like yeah I don't play these games. This is really <laughs> a lot of reading <laughs> yeah. this is why I don't play these I mean, it's games such, there's but... such massive time sinks as well yeah, I, I can't do it yeah, these are not my kinds of games but yeah like massive time sinks games like any sims nowadays are just 
Yeah, I love hearing about people do, doing too. weird yeah. things in <laughs> Crusader Kings. I mean, but the, the good thing is, you don't, you don't even need to do anything weird. The game just sometimes does weird <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's kind of the beauty of them. Sometimes you're minding your own business and something crazy happens. Just kicks down your door and says hello. <laughs> yeah. Um, the the right. patch notes for these like kind of games are always just reading through those are brilliant. <laughs> like stops uh, children from eating their siblings and stuff ah, like yeah. that. Was, yeah, yeah. Uh, really good. <laughs> yeah, they, they can have a bit of fun with those sometimes. So. <laughs> uh, so you played a lot, Ben. I take it you you enjoy the game then. Yeah, yeah, I I do. It was um I think third in my um top games of uh, last year um, and since reading your write-up I have had a uh, <laughs> a little little dabble back into it yeah. as, as it's sort of running in the background as I'm kind of working away rather than watching Voyager as I have been for the last sort of week um, nice. well, I, uh, well I'm pleased to give you something else to do <laughs> yes yes just as, as another distraction to my day whilst I should be doing yeah. something else um, but yeah I've, I've, I've jumped back into it and it, there's a, a few uh, like updates. I, I did, things maybe I didn't notice before. Um, I'm not sure there was sort of weather effects the last time I played it in terms of it being winter and then suddenly it's all snowy and the ground is um, you know suddenly like frosted over and things like that. You know, little little yeah. kind of additions like that. But I think they must have added a ton of stuff um, yeah. to it. There is an expansion, but that's not included oh. in the Game Pass version. Okay. Uh, you have to, to pay the extra for that, which I may well at some point. Mm. Uh, but at the moment, I'm just playing the version that's available on that. But you, again, most of the these kind of games, Paradox, have been quite good for adding expansions on a relatively, you know, good frequency for their games that mm -hmm. keeps them fresh and interesting as they go along so they they morph and evolve as they go yeah um yeah so for people who don't know what crusader kings 3 is uh, it's a grand strategy game from paradox the interactive they make quite a few different strategy games that's sort of their their thing uh, it runs in real time and you're basically playing as a character and the idea of the game is from your start date, which can be sort of like 1066 or a bit earlier, right the way through to, I want to say like the 1700s or so, when it's potentially like the, the farthest it goes. I don't think I I've, 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 I've definitely played for several hundred years. Yeah. But it, I've it never can got go that kind of far. Yeah. It can, it can, th there's an upper limit of that kind of pre modern sort of era uh, sort of before the, the quote unquote nation states mm. sort of start taking over historically speaking and so yeah you, you play it as a character and the idea is is that you play your character and you take their dynasty through this time period and you interact with all the other characters so you can start as like a duke like I did as the duke of Bohemia which is part of the Holy Roman Empire mm. and then so I am a vassal of the Emperor <laughs> of the, the Holy Roman Empire, and I also have vassals who serve under me, who I have to order about and try and keep in line. And then you have your heirs, which depending on which faction you are, could be like your brother, or it could be your sons or your daughter or whatever. And then so when your character dies of old age or of mishaps, or in battle, uh, you then take over as the your, your player air and then you start role playing again as them and so that leads to so quite interesting and weird and wonderful things that can potentially happen to uh, as you navigate the sort of weird and wonderful world of uh, the upper echelons of society and yeah. the, the, the ten hundreds <laughs> and, mm. and so on and if nothing else it gives you an appreciation for why reading about those periods of history in any detail are very overwhelming because you have mm. all of these names and this person 
is related to that person who knows this person who is serving that person who owns this bit of land over here and over here because their grandfather did a thing once and then this person over there did that mm. and you see it suddenly makes sense to you why English barons who overthrew King John or one of the kings had holdings in France even mm. though they're English <laughs> And, and so on and so forth and suddenly all of that stuff starts to make a little bit more sense as to why it's as chaotic and crazy as it is yeah. uh, because that's you get why a sort you hear of... nowadays that MPs are living in the Caribbean and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, again it's all about accumulating power and wealth mm-hmm. and using it to be in charge basically and, Tory simulator yeah and you can do that in so many different ways and there's all sorts of uh, you know, obviously the, there's battles. Uh, you don't take control of them. The uh, they just happen on the campaign map. Uh, you marry off like your children and stuff to people to create alliances, because the only way to have alliances is either through blood or marriage. And you know, and you you try and work your way through everything that way. And it's as I said, it leads to some interesting, crazy goings on. Uh, as I detail in my grand plan and my uh, <laughs> right uh, it looks like uh, someone could read this in 300 years time now that the earth will be around them let's say 60 <laughs> and they think oh my yeah. god what was, what was uh, yeah. Adam Baron of Scotland doing <laughs> <laughs> I mean you, I, can't, I could play in Scotland there'd be a Baron that'd be interesting yeah uh, um, <laughs> Yeah, and it, it, it's one of those strange things to these people in there that in each other alive. It, it's yeah. one of those things like my first playthrough because I'm like, oh, I could be anyone. I guess I will be. I can't remember who it was, like Alfred or Eric or some person, but whoever was then the Duke of Wessex, yeah, um, which is where I'm kind of originally from. Um, yeah. And I thought, well, yeah, I'll start with this. And, and England or Britain around that time in sort of 1066 just constantly gets invaded. And <laughs> all I was, all my character was doing was like, oh, I'm this person's vassal now. Oh, okay, now I'm this person's vassal now. Now I yeah. can take over a little bit. Now I'm leaning into Somerset a little bit. Okay, let's take a little bit of that. Let's go in down into Devon a little bit and take a little bit of that. Bit. Mm-hmm. But I'm still kind of someone's vassal. And then there's, the, you know, the way that they do their succession is through voting so i at then some point became the king of england and then that was just massively disrupted by whoever was uh, um you know in mercia and sussex and all of these kinds of other places who are then your vassals who wanted to currently fight you so i'm currently now playing through um as i've never heard of the um the place but it's basically slightly east of Estonia I'm like I'll just try over here somewhere just to see what it's like as a, you know, as a, new, as a new playthrough yeah. as a new playthrough I, I do I do like that as a as a system for picking is that how about over there mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't don't remember looking at that bit in my previous playthrough. Let's just exactly. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I know nothing about this area of the world. Did Let's you recognise any of the names? You of are anything definitely there? British. Then <laughs> don't know what's over here. Let's go conquer it. <laughs> so some of the there are some there are some names. Um, I won't yeah. try and remember them whilst we're discussing it. But there are some names like history. You know, Estonia currently exists. Finland currently exists. And then there's a lot of like Sami yeah. tribes and stuff, kind of you yeah. know, just to the north of that. Uh, there's lots of early sort of Russian and and uh, you know uh, northern eastern kind of Baltic um, sort of peoples that I'm currently butting up uh, with. Plus this massive invading wow. force, um, kind of who are just systematically taking out and, and currently coming kind of west, um, which looked like it was kind of Turkmenistan or somewhere like you know what what is now Turkmenistan so it's like not quite the Scythians we're not back as far as as, as that but it's kind of somewhere there who have just been sweeping up up through um, it's it's like yeah to have that little bit of that kind of 
history element to it as well and whilst this kind of deviates from that you know it's not yeah these are the things that happened and you have to fit in with those sorts of things it allows you to create your own fiction sort of around that but it has bits of history to it which are really interesting to, to sort of be like oh, okay i can see kind of how these different areas sort of all then turned into what is then lithuania or what was the you know the russian sort of block kind of thing yeah that 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 is what i find fascinating about these games in some ways is it gives you that historical base point and gives you these systems that sort of vaguely simulate roughly sort of what people were trying to do and puts you in the shoes of someone who was there and go have at it and see mm. if you can do any better will you be brilliant and conquer everything or will you be stabbed in the back by your brother because he doesn't like you <laughs> uh, and the decisions you've made and you didn't realize like it it does uh, you say it, it takes these historical starting point and with the systems in place gives you the tools to just move forward because uh, again can, use Total War as my kind of base point for a lot of this stuff and it works in such a completely different way to that mm, mm. Uh, and the, on the, the strategic map because everything has to have justification uh, so like how you control land is based on titles uh, mm. you have titles to counties uh, titles to duchies and kingdoms and empires and they're all interlinked by what they call in the game the the the, the jure system uh, so again they have a broadly historical basis mostly mm. uh, like the, the duke of bohemia was a place or bohemia is a place you know the holy roman empire is made up of all these different dukedoms and baronies and all the rest of it and the different counties and stuff and and you know they interlink and then they become part of this empire which is the holy roman empire and then it's the same and you know like wessex is part of the kingdom of england which can go on to become the empire of britain and so on mm -hmm. you know and and again the, the systems in place that you can change those is you're playing and you know if you go and capture a bunch of territory that's not within the de jure of like your kingdom it can become so after a certain amount of time because you've held it for so long it sort of assimilates mm -hmm. in uh, and so on and so forth so the map changes as the games progress in that way but it has that basis so when you start a war you have to have a claim to one of these titles uh, so it can either be for a single county or it can be for a whole kingdom and you can fight over them and it's based entirely on that so if you win you get up to 100% you win loads of battles and capture territory off them uh, you win, you get to enforce your demands and you claim whatever it was you declared the war over uh, be it a title or, you know, be it a single county or the whole thing Okay, um, so you can deviate from real world history in that yeah. sense yeah. by yeah. tweaking the settings or, or can you just do that in a No, just, you just do it no, that's you just, just, that's do just it. playing oh, through okay. the, the game so that's just uh, the way the system works So there's, there's, there's uh, ways to, even though yeah. say you might be this person who only has only ever come through a Linux of succession for this area there are uh, like mechanics where you can fabricate claims so okay. yeah, mm. you, can, you can get your sort of uh, um, your courtiers to um spend time fabricating a claim on a county or somewhere like that and that then allows you that sort of avenue to then lead off to other sort of things um, it very much depends on the sort of the character that you decide to start essentially you know you could decide i'm going to be you know i'm going to start at this date and i'm going to be the king of england i think there's two starting dates there's 1066 and then there's 863 or something like that right um uh, and you, you can basically say I'm going to be this character who is you know in charge of this massive area okay. and I'm going, to, I'm going to put myself in right at the top and see how everything kind of happens from there whether my children come in as successors and how that sort of plays out between them and all of this sort of stuff or you can start off as 
you know, lowly uh, kind of. I'm gonna be the Baroness of Battersea. Yeah. <laughs> more, more like the, exactly, and try more and... like the wench of Wandsworth. Yeah. But yeah, I can be the wench of Wandsworth, and I can basically say I'm gonna conquer everything, and now Battersea yeah. is the centre yep. of the you universe. You can, you can, you can oh, marry cool. in. You can marry into another area as well. You mm-hmm. can marry your kids off, as Adam said, and they can then form alliances with other people. Um, there, there's lots of sort of ways that you can also kind of like scheme and stuff and one of the things that's just happened in my most recent playthrough is that I had when I started as the character I started as he already had a, a kid but mm-hmm. not like a legitimised bastard basically who was then the player heir because he didn't have any other children yeah. and then through sort of the, the, the spouse that I then chose they had a kid who then became the heir, who then was the target of a murder scheme by his half half brother, your half brother, yeah. um, who then I imprisoned because of this. And whilst he was in prison, the kid died anyway. Oh so he then became the player heir again. And I'm like, oh, bollocks, because I imprisoned him, everyone else now hates him. And then my character died and I became that character and everyone fucking hates him. Like, brilliant. <laughs> what a great place to be. Yeah. It, it can backfire on you spectacularly. And, like, uh, the, the thing that I like the most about playing these sorts of strategy games is the fact that you fail miserably half the time playing them. <laughs> yes. Um, it's about... It is the learning process that mm. makes them fun for the most part, mm. especially in the beginning. Because, you know, as I said, I'm on my third playthrough. If I understood the entire system, what happened to me in my story, or and how I conquered my son in a kingdom, and uh, he now hates me for it, <laughs> <laughs> uh, wouldn't have happened because I would have understood what I was doing and what it meant. Uh, in a way that I didn't before I did it <laughs> until I got to the end and went oh 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 crap <laughs> <laughs> that didn't go to plan at all <laughs> um, it's like a it, Mac Adventure game where it's like you just want to see all the grizzly deaths and it's just like you know, <laughs> I'll walk into this pit that doesn't have a light and then they're just explaining graphic t- detail what happens to your mangled body so yeah, yeah. I, know, I know the joy of I mean there is a lot of that joy. Yeah. there is a lot of that as well <laughs> yeah it's because the, the the best strategy games on this kind of scale and Total War is a good example of it is they give you the tools to understand why you fail mm. Mm. so they give you the information that you need so that when you fail you go oh oh now I understand why that happened or, oh, I should have prepared for this eventuality better. Or, it was really silly of me to make this army full of peasants and send them to the most fortified city in the entire <laughs> campaign. Man. That was obviously daft. I should have brought a better army. <laughs> or 12. <laughs> you know, and they, they give you the information and the tools that you need so that you can see how the systems are working and interacting. And so when it works well, you do have these experiences where... I was trying to do this, and I did this and this, and then that happened, and everything went to fucking shit, <laughs> and it all failed, and now, now I know not to do that again. <laughs> this time, I'm going to do this instead, you know. Mm-hmm. So, in, in, instead of doing, instead of building that building, I'm going to build these couple of buildings, and spend a bit more time building up some money and buying more mercenaries this time because they have better troop quality <laughs> and they'll turn the tide in the battles and then I'll kick that stupid bastard's ass <laughs> and he'll be none the wiser because obviously the game doesn't know I'm planning to do that mm. uh, but yeah so it's, it's that process that I enjoy quite a lot with these games and that's why you end up spending a couple hundred hours playing them and uh, the you, best yeah. friends and the best ones still throw the occasional surprise at you. Mm-hmm. So even though I understand the system and I'm and I'm making these plans and I'm doing well and I'm succeeding for the most part, there'll still be things that crop up that get the better of you. And I can see the places where that's going to happen in Crusader Kings 3 where even though I won all the battles and I won the wars I, I started on purpose, <laughs> nothing 
it didn't go entirely to plan and there's always the possibility that someone who doesn't like me has me killed <laughs> and that could happen anytime <laughs> particularly if i'm already trying to kill them and they find out <laughs> yes it, it's always the don't you want to come to my feast invitations I'm like, mm, do i Ooh. yeah <laughs> yeah and yeah that, that's one of the things that I didn't bring up in my own, but I had one of my other sons just invite like all of his other siblings to a feast at one point. They were, they were all underage, so he came and asked me. I would be delighted if uh, X and Y could come to my feast. I'm like, okay. And then two seconds later, I would love if this person could come too. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and it just kept happening, and I'm like, are they all gonna die? <laughs> 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 Like now, I, the first couple weren't suspicious. Now they're getting suspicious when they invited all of them. Uh, they they came back fine this time, but next time they might not be so lucky. Exactly. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Uh, uh, because that that particular son was, he was my vassal and had control over like two counties, but didn't wasn't of age yet anyway. It was one of those kind of weird ones. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so it can throw up some some interesting surprises, and I'm I'm interested to see where my game goes from here. Now that my son who hates me controls a kingdom bigger than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. It's just something that if you check the the right up, I put the maps in, uh, some screenshots of the maps that show you my kingdom of Bohemia, which is like this mm-hmm. big, and then Hungary, which is like this big. <laughs> Like right next to it. <laughs> it's when it's when you do start getting into the uh, crusades as well, uh, yeah. and you have to send people along and nominate people who would then be, um, you know, landowners and and kings or queens within the um, you know the old world sort of thing because yeah. the because the, the Catholics well. The Pope has essentially decided that what a place to stop. Yeah, the um, the Pope has decided that that this land is now going to be his. So send yeah. send your best people down there. Um, it gets really fucking messy, like insanely messy, when you're trying to balance kind of right. all the stuff going up here, and then a load of stuff going on down here, and other marriages and all of these other things, and everyone going, hey, can you come and help me fight this war, please? And I'm like, ah, oh, but my people are all the whatever, you know. It gets absolutely insane, which is brilliant. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they, they do like Only was <laughs> So, <laughs> how long did the tutorial take you? I'm uh, now curious. I, I, I'm like tempted to dabble, but I want to know what I'm getting into. Uh, the tutorial was like two hours, roughly, by the time I, because I, I took my time reading through everything it was telling me, yeah. and then. Because the the tutorial basically it, it starts you off as like a petty king in uh, Ireland. Mm. Uh, mm. So Ireland is you know it's not a whole kingdom yet. It's still in the multiple people own little slices of it, and it starts you off as one of those. And it right. takes you through sort of the basics of here's your court, here's their council positions. You want to put people who have the right attributes in these positions, but some of like your your vassals and stuff will basically demand a position on it, mm-hmm. even if they're fucking shit, shit. Yeah. <laughs> because they are quote unquote quote unquote powerful. Uh, you know, because they they own a couple of counties or whatever, or they, you know, you can imagine that when that scales up to when you're a king, and you'll have like a powerful duke who wants a seat on the council because. He owns, you know, like a third of the territory that's quote unquote under your control, right? Uh, and you're going to want to do that to keep him happy, even if he's absolute dog shit at all of the jobs. <laughs> and you have plenty of more capable people who would do better, but you might want to keep him in place to keep him happy, sort of thing. Right? So it takes you through, you know, the basics of how that works. It takes you through starting a war and, for, you know, how that works and so on. It takes you through the different things. And then it basically just kind of lets you just continue in that scenario for as long as you want. So I just kept playing that kind of tutorial mm, starting point right. until 
uh, my character dying to, as I said of old age in his mid 60s or something like that mm. <laughs> you know which was old at the time <laughs> very old mm. yeah um, and then I decided to, to you know to start a second one fresh and put some of what I learned into practice makes and sense and then that, that went terribly so I then started <laughs> my third game which is going much better <laughs> I do mm. enjoy the title Petty King not like he's, yeah. you know, a, 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 a king of a small land or a subordinate of someone else. But he's just sort of like, fucking people. <laughs> God damn. All these other kings doing all their stuff. Why can't I do that stuff? I assume that's what they mean. <laughs> I want this game to have, like, you know, supernatural things in it. Like, I want to discover, like, alchemy and live forever and... <laughs> That's what I, and like. I'd you know, be interested. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see because I'm again I'm playing through Game Pass. Uh, mm-hmm. Have always mm-hmm. have always played through Game Pass. I'm interested to see what the mod community is like on on Steam. Yeah. So there's nothing on yeah. on Game Pass at all. So yeah, make it Middle Earth. But yeah, Middle Earth, like Game of Thrones. I bet all of this stuff has has kind of like come up yeah. and been sort of used. So suddenly to be like, I'm going to start as yeah. the White Walker King and just <laughs> yeah. eat everybody. <laughs> I, wouldn't be surprised if there's, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there's quite a lot on like Nexus mods or something like that. I haven't looked yet. Because there is an option on the like menu when you open it for mods. What was that? Uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, so so when you launch it through Game Pass it comes up with a like paradox the, like opening through that. Yes. Thing. Yeah, yeah, it does lead you through the paradox client, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a menu thing in there for for mods yeah. before you like launch the game. Uh, so you should still be able to put them in some. Mm, mm, as long as they've gone yeah. through Paradox, yes, yes. And yeah. I, the, the Paradox were amazingly good at mods uh, and, and integrating them for City Skylines. Um, mm. Absolutely fantastic for that. Even bringing on people who had done mods into their teams and, and things like that. Um, so yeah, it's I haven't I didn't even realise that. So I will I will have a look. And I, yeah. I will say that the integration, the the way that you click play on Game Pass and it takes you to the Paradox client to start it up. Brilliant. Why doesn't everyone, why isn't EA games that much easier to play through nah. fucking Game Pass? All those other people that, that I mean, want you to do it. Like Paradox just seems be... to have, have nailed yeah. playing yeah. their game. <laughs> mm. I mean, I oh. would prefer that it didn't open up anything and just. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I, I've done some googling mm. <laughs> because that is my resident new role. The role. Yes. Apparently, um, when you go, you know how you have to like sign on to Xbox Live every time you run a Game Pass game. Yes. Well, if you go into your Xbox Live page, uh, in the privacy and online safety bit, you can uh, check a box that is. You can see and upload community creations, and you can click everyone, um, and then that should mean that mods show up okay. Okay. on your Creator King splash screen. So instead of saying news and settings, it'll be news, oh. mods, and settings. Oh. Uh, and it just already, should already. pop up. Um, I must have clicked that already. <laughs> um, <laughs> But what yeah, appara- 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 apparently what's, what's, it's that's unsafe. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just have to basically tell Xbox you want to see mods, and th- yeah. as far as I could tell, this is like a global thing for your account rather than tied to a game, which cool. means mm-hmm. any other uh, Game Pass game that allows mods via mm. this flag would then also work. Macho Man Randy Savage Death Claws. <laughs> mm. I only I would assume yes. Yeah, excellent. Perfect, perfect. It's a, a good place then, with a little bit of information, for us to move on from Crusader Kings 3. Uh, I think we're probably all ready for another beer. See. Beer one. Perfect. No. <laughs> Lucy! Yeah. Oh. oh, no, you're still drinking. You're still Lucy. drinking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, a, just a little. Just a little. Just a little. Just a little. Just a little left. While she's you slurping want to, the remains, to yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll come to you. We'll come to you, Ada, while she's while she's just finishing off. Uh, I have a beer. Oh, it is from Whiplash. Oh, it is the sup. It is a porter. 
Uh, so it's a 5% porter. It has water, barley, hops, yeast. That's good. Uh, <laughs> Glad those things are there. Yeah. <laughs> it has a weird dude <laughs> on you. the can. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, yeah. I assume <laughs> they're the sup. Uh, they're what's the sup? It doesn't work. Mm. Yeah. So it's a five percent porter. It's whiplash. Um, unfiltered, it's half unpasteurized. Man, half rhinoceros beetle or something like that. Well, I get so I you say that, but actually it looks kind of like there's like. It's almost like there's an Asian character in the background, and then this is just a cutout. You know what I mean? Hmm. Like something akin to the shape. It doesn't matter. It's a weird image. Google it, yeah. podcast yeah. listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, the sup is almost the weird thing you would say to it in a B tier horror movie when you see it in the hallway. Mm. <laughs> the sup. <laughs> it's the sup. <laughs> the sup. <laughs> Does it kill you? Yeah. Oh, oh! I'm gonna wish I didn't show that poor on screen. <laughs> oh, it's, it's it's a frothy boy, uh, Lucy. Yeah. What are you yeah. uh, cracking into next? I'm opening a wiper and true uh, amber ale called Tea and Biscuits. Does that ring a bell to anyone? I drank that really? about an hour and a half ago. <laughs> But nice. it wasn't on the podcast. So. No. <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's why I laughed because it was just like, ah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, good. We can compare and contrast next hmm. then. Um. What's the percentage? It was like four point eight percent. Mm-hmm. Uh. Ooh. What's this EU address? Yes. Hundred percent. Is this where they? Uh... <laughs> anyway, do my friend true export the beers to Europe? Uh, I didn't. Yes, no. I guess so. But... Oh, okay. Um, I mean, if they're smart, they will. Yeah. Um. Anyway, developed in collaboration with tea experts Canton, this amber ale is a. Uh, Homage to tea and biscuits, a bespoke loose leaf Earl Grey blend brings a harmonious chorus of bergamot, lemon, lime, and black tea, partnered beautifully with, uh, beautifully by a gentle, sweet biscuit scented malt base. A complex yet comforting beer. I didn't know it was Earl Grey. That's very nice. Mm, I'm Mm. looking forward to this. Uh, get it, get it yeah. cracked, get it open, get it poured. I am going to open uh, another Arbor beer. I had one last week. I'm going to have another one. Uh, Yakima Valley. I, I know we've had uh, like double Yakima on the pod. Have um, we have we just missed the OG Yakima? I don't know. Pod? I feel like we've probably drank it before, but I mean, a, a, a it's quick craft search, beer, isn't it? I mean, it's craft beer. Yeah, uh, it'd be different, wouldn't it? Um, yeah. I don't know. When I searched the site, I couldn't see mention of this uh, Yakima Valley, uh, but it's seven percent American IPA. Uh, it's got Amarillo, Cascade, Chinook, Citra, and Summit in it. Uh, of course, it's Wiper True, so it's in a big pint can. Um, that's everything on there. I will get it cracked, and we'll circle back. Adol, to you. Head's gone. It now looks very similar to Adam's cola. I mean, that's a very similar thing to say about the can art as well, wasn't it? Head's gone, but it's... hey, yeah. well done. Um, you, you're oh, wow. more of a head, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> Adam's um, holding up the Coca-Cola bottle just in case you don't know what Coca-Cola <laughs> looks like. <laughs> uh, for comparison. Yes. Indeed. <laughs> it's, of uh, course, it would be easy to forget. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's really lovely. Um, it's, oh, I'm struggling with what that note is. It's um, it's got a underlying sweetness. It's got the booziness. Even though I think you said it was five percent. Mm-hmm. It's got a boozier nose than five percent. It smells like a porter. It's got a bit of that root 
cordery smell. Um, but there's this like light sweetness on top. Again, obviously, malts in the middle of those two notes. Just like a oh, there. I'm, I, there's a note, and I cannot for the life of me figure out where where what I'm recognizing. Be and sure. I really want to say it, obviously, but I have a nomi on it. So there's this thing. It's really pleasant. Uh, <laughs> it, it makes smell better. <laughs> um, ah. So yeah, it's because it's five percent. It's a little less on the mouth. Feel less clingy than I would like. Mm -hmm. Um. It's really, it's kind of light, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. This is like, this would be a good porter to introduce someone to the, the type with because it's not in your face. It's not, it's malty. It's got some roasted notes. Um, less, honestly, you're not getting a lot of the oats. I'm getting a lot more of like roasted barley, um, coffee notes but again really t toned down uh we'll see if maybe the um the piney grapefruit has just is influencing my palate right now still but it has the lingering roasted notes um not burnt coffee just light coffee um i think the last thing i had that was coffee-ish like last week i was like ah it's kind of take or maybe it was a week before it doesn't matter recently i had something that it was like oh yeah it's like burnt diner coffee like it's like the coffee has been burned it's that in your face this is the like polar opposite it's like oh yes light or uh, like light tastes of coffee but again like just not like oh this is a coffee tasting beer um you know maybe it's because i jokingly mentioned adam's cola but i do feel like there's a rooty cola <laughs> taste in here what I really like about the roasted um, notes is it kind of comes in after the cola e stuff. It kind of dissipates, and you're left with just this like light, lingering, slightly mouth drying, um, like a, 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 a bitter porter finish, just mm -hmm. but really light. Um, and there's a sweetness sitting on top, and I, this is why I think it's like, hey, you've never had a porter before it would be a really good thing to present because it has all the all the you know it, it checks all the boxes but everything's toned down and nothing stays for very long primary taste fades quickly the finish is really light and kind of fades quickly and but it's it's all like well under surface level it's not this is not like a oh yeah a fucking porter mate like this is a these are the if do you like any of these things like pay, maybe you would like to try more of this versus but like if you don't, this you can finish. It's not. It's not like yeah. you know where you give, hand someone like a a black IPA that's like super like kind of boozy, and then they're like, "What the fuck is this? Please take it back." <laughs> right? I, I, this will never that like don't think will happen unless the person doesn't like beer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that was notes or, or me just describing a, an experience without any uh, helpful additions to the. To the audience, but that's, oh, those are those are my fine. thoughts. Those are my thoughts. Yeah. Absolutely, mm. uh, Lucy, the wiper and true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I expected like a uh, this to be like kind of like a deal's last beer, like quite clear. Uh, but no, it's very murky. It looks mm. in the nicest way. It looks like uh, pond water. Um, it's opaque. You can't even see through it. But yeah, it's it's definitely got amber um, color to it. Um, yeah, dark orange, uh, amberish. It's not quite red or anything, but uh, yeah, the, the the smell of the Earl Grey is just so prominent. Um, it, it like even caught the back of my throat almost. The mm. smell in it is really strong, but it's nice. It's it's a beautiful smelling beer. If you like the smell of Earl Grey, that is. But yeah, it smells like a a iced tea. Yes. Hmm. Not AOST or smells like iced tea. The iced tea. Uh, the oh. man himself. Yes, the man himself. I've sniffed him. 
Um, I mean, that was going to be my follow-up question. <laughs> <laughs> it's the beer's flatter than I thought. It's mm. um, which which kind of matches with like you know iced tea. It's not like you're not gonna don't really get like you know very bubbly or frothy or effervescent iced teas. Like they are very like kind of still. Complete contrast um, to the last beer, which was just just so fizzy. Um, but you're not getting as much Earl Grey in the actual taste as you are in the aroma, but you are getting mm. it. The hint is there. I guess some of the black tea as well. Um, especially if you take your coffee, not coffee, your tea black and just, you know, let the let it steep for a bit it's sort of getting that as well but probably getting that more a little bit more than the old grey actually what else did it say um there's a little bit of bitterness at the end bergamo yeah i'm probably getting the bergamo as well black tea um it's got a bit of a lemony limey zing as well not too much it's not sour like the last beer I think, to be honest, it's 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 it's, it's the perfect answer to the last beer, where mm. it's just like almost the complete opposite. Where yes, you are getting a bit of fruit, like the the bergamo, the lemon, the lime, and not getting the apples, and it it just feels so much more. Reserve is the wrong word because you know it's not like um, the colonel went out to make like a crazy, I don't know tiny rebel-esque fierce beer kind of like mad concoction but I mean neither just tastes like an actual beer but I think I'd much rather drink this I'm like kind of spoiling my favorite but I'd much rather drink this just because it is it's a bit more pared back it's a bit more reserved it's a, the flavors aren't so they're more subtle mm. Um, mm. that's it's exactly what I thought it's it's very yeah. light it's very subtle you do get the flavors that it's pushing through, but they 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 kind of almost they're like, hey, we're here, but we're almost trying to give way to the other things that are, are sort of happening. And there is that yeah. more biscuity kind of malty backbone to it, which again, yeah, is incredibly light, but just sort of sits throughout the whole kind it of does, flavor yeah. as well. I think I think especially like the malty base is. Yeah, it's subtle. I think I think if you you were looking for like a, a nice, if, if you like say didn't like beer as a deal was saying before, and it's not a case where I don't think you could pit this up and be like, this is a nice like iced tea kind of beer, quote unquote. Mm. I think that bit of bitterness and the bit of maltiness, I think that would put someone off if they didn't like beer. I think there's mm. there's just enough of that where that would um ruin the experience but for me who's yeah i want a bit a bit more of that those beer sensibilities rather than cider yeah. or just iced tea um that helps immensely with this so yeah I mean, this is all right it's, um the other earl grey beers i'm trying to think of, i know marvel do one mm -hmm. which is quite nice and um can't remember the others but yeah for for, for an earl grey beer it's decent I, I like how as I say reserved it is um you think going in just smelling it there's going to be a ton of Earl Grey and that's just going to dominate everything but it's just so much mm. more reserved in the taste and yeah it, it, it's a very easy drinking beer because it is so smooth and you know flat in a non-condescending way so yeah it's good 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 it's what I expect from white and true really mm, like yeah. Subtle, subtle flavors just done very well. Yeah, um, unlike good. this Yakima Valley, it's nothing subtle about the the, the beer. Look at that, look at that thick, oh, juicy wow. boy. There's mm. nothing subtle about that or the nose, and no is, head at all. Uh, it poured with a little bit, but it disappeared mm. quite quickly. Um, this nose though is incredible. It's it's so dank, so dank. There's a little bit, again, a little bit of fruitiness in there, but... I mean, it looks not far off. I mean, it looks a few shades lighter than my beer, but it's just, like, opaque. Mm. Yeah. And murky, yeah. And murky is a good word, murky, yeah. Murky, yeah, absolutely murky. 
and again that comes across in the uh, in the flavor as well because there's so many hops in this uh, uh, Amarillo Cascade Chinook Citra and Summit and it's a, it's a bit of a murky mash of flavors going on as the nose had that tiny bit of fruit and it was very sort of dank the flavor it follows through with that but it adds in this mm, this kind of we talk about this kind of like ashy smoky uh, um, sort of almost harshness to a, to a bitterness that you can get it's got that sat at the back as well so whilst it has again on the flavor a tiny bit of fruit a lot of dankness to it, it's really really weedy um, mm. it, it then has this really like very light but very harsh bitterness like if this if the bitterness was dialed up a couple more you you would sort of sit here and be like I have absolutely just eaten a cigarette um, whereas <laughs> wait do cigarettes eat bitter <laughs> I was, was going to no, say taste no, no, bitter no, no, but no. like obviously it, taste it, 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 it's got that real smoky ashy ah, kind of note gotcha. to it um, oh, so it's not it's probably the feeling bitter. you would have after someone had forced you to eat the cigarette <laughs> <laughs> that's a different oh, feeling entirely um, <laughs> I, feel, but I it's, feel better about that <laughs> it's kind of it's just just balanced out enough with that kind of initial sweetness. Again, maybe a little bit of uh, a little bit of grapefruit, a little tiny hint of citrus, but that fades really quickly to leave you with this finish. Um, it's it's a it's you know it's seven percent, so it's a bit bigger for what Arbor normally uh, uh, kind of push out when they're in their sort of mid fives and mid sixes. Um, but yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a big old flavour that I think mm. again not to get too ahead of ourselves. I think it's a big flavour that you've got to be in the mood for, like yeah. incredibly smoky, incredibly weedy and dank. Um, it's 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 definitely and it, it calls itself rather than Amer an APA. It's not an American pale ale. It's an American IPA. So it's it's trying to almost I guess dial up the IPA qualities rather than being just a bigger lighter uh, beer so we'll see how it, it, it sits and how it kind of my palate adjusts to it as we mm. as we go uh, but we'll jump back into topics um, and Adam I know you want to chat a little bit about uh, anime and we will do so we won't spend uh, too long on it but I just want to check in with everybody else uh, before we yeah. do that I, I know there's um, Perhaps some talk of uh, Forza Horizon 5 as well. Uh, Lucy, did you have anything else that you needed to cover this week? Uh, no, I haven't played anything. Like, I started Inscription, like an actual oh, yeah, one. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I, I want to play more of that game, but I want to I wanna dig deep into it. It's one of those games where it's like, okay, this isn't just going to be a card game. There's going to be weird stuff going on around the fringes and it's like mm. I want to dig into that and I've, I'm have i still on my first run outside of the tutorial that I did um, a few a few uh, weeks ago on like the Steam game next fest or whatever yeah. it is yeah. so it's just like mm. yeah I just haven't found the time unfortunately so that's gonna any time that I have spare <laughs> This week, I just want to play that game. I just want to go in a dark room and just, you know, by candlelight Knuckles. play inscription. Mm. Yeah, mm. <laughs> uh, nice. just that's all I want to do. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's, so far, it's very gripping. Uh, Good, even, even though I'm only a little bit in, and it's it's one of those where it's like, yeah, I'm interested to see the just the different cards that you get and decks that you can build and just like any tactic yes i i do like that when i can stomach it a deal when i i know it just, it, it when the wrappings are right when yeah. the wrappings are well, right i i like well, this that. Is, this <laughs> is interesting to me as as a big card game person um but just because 
I that's my suspicion is it's more about getting over the hump of that thinking about that style of play being boring because yeah. it can be like I mean there's a reason why so many games have cards in them now is because and why there's like a million card games out there um it's because it, they're just really simple ways of conveying information and mm -hmm. resources essentially yeah. right and so it, it, mechanically they can do all kinds of crazy things mm -hmm. and and so yeah, it's yeah. Just, I mean, there's a reason why people study with flashcards, but that's why I'm not. I mm. I am of the opinion that like, there's a card game out there for most that there is a card game someone in, for everyone to enjoy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I often hear people like, you know, you think. I mean, I'm a Magic the Gathering nerd. I get that's not for everyone, <laughs> right? Um, but often card games are lumped into this notion of like, like super strategic. Deck building y things, but actually, you can have looser, less like, oh, I need to get the precision of which card to play when, because that's the like core of the gameplay. To like, ah, I'm these are just manipulating information in really tactile ways. Yeah. And some, not all games need to have all the, like a million different mechanics, but that's what people yeah. think a lot with card games. Yeah. yeah. And I genuinely don't dislike <laughs> I mean it seems like anything strategy like focus that I hate but <laughs> I've played a lot of hearts in my day I've played a lot of spider swords <laughs> just spider swords yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like I never dislike card games it's just probably yeah as you say like the wrappings around it like well, I've played a fair bit of like Slay the Spire and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. it was and you liked Steam Quest, World Steam Quest. Quest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Steam World I Quest. never finished that. I think you did, didn't you? Mm -hmm. yeah. I like anything those guys do. So. I, 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 I it was one of those like, <laughs> I'm really into this. I'm really into this. Oh, I need to take a break to do work or whatever. And then mm -hmm. I got back to it. And I'm like, oh, I just oh, recently changed it. <laughs> well, I was like, I, literally, it was like, oh, I just, I'm in a. I'm in a dungeon e place where there's like a lot of tough enemies. Oh, I've clearly goodness. changed mm -hmm. to a new deck with a, one of the newer characters. I don't know how to optimally play. Like I played a couple minutes and I was like, yeah. oh, I'm just trash at this game right now. <laughs> and I know some of this like my memory, but also I was like, oh, I think I like did a lot of tweaks, but also I don't remember enough about the game to know like how do I back like how what do I need to do to make it so that I can go yeah. back to something easier to like ah fuck it I'll just not play it ever again mm. they, they, they do some voodoo magic in their games because they just make them so approachable not easy yeah. but approachable like um steam world what's the turn based one called heist uh he yeah heist. steam world heist really like that great game me too yeah. and i hate turn based strategy games like that and it's like i i, I thought that i think i wrote a review for it like 20 years ago and yeah it's <laughs> I, I, I really enjoyed that. But, when we were wee yeah, pups. We we pup oh yeah. When we when were wee pups. Yeah. Just, uh, when we were yeah, playing uh, the game Wee Pups. <laughs> 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 Not Nintendogs, Wee Pups. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, inscription is just something I just want to dive into. I'm just looking forward to it. And, oh I picked it up too. Yeah. Oh sweet, so I don't want to hear anything about it. Like, I, I haven't. <laughs> I've avoided I haven't spoilers. It. So. <laughs> I don't I, I, I've heard enough good things that yeah. I was like, ah, no, I think because remember last week I was talking about, oh, what's a game I want might want to mm. jump, jump into? I have a backlog, but also I have the internet and standard gamer FOMO, and I, I've heard such good things and like, but like Alt F forward as soon as like details came up, so like I know there's a twist. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't, don't know what, anything. But I, yeah. that's when I started Alt F4. -ing. But it's like, oh, it's the people who have not hit the twist have been like, great game. And people mm -hmm. who hit the twist are like, amazing game. And I'm like, cool, <laughs> I'll buy that. There's, there's that, absolutely that's a kind of twist we like, yes. Yes, yeah. There's, there's absolutely I mean, a waypoint episode that you should all ignore completely. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah I, I, I just go to the timestamps and like, hey, yep, skipping that part. Yeah. But um, yeah. it, I mean, you you get a, basically in the tutorialization um you, there's something that it's like you literally can't win as far as i know i don't know if it's like 
like the start of like Symphony of the Night where you can actually mm-hmm. beat Dracula or something like that. Anyway, after that, after he, you know this creepy guy across the table says like, "Look, you, you're out of choices. You know, I have to sacrifice you." <laughs> and stuff like that. You basically get up from the table that you're sitting at, and you can see where the like kind of escape room kind of mechanics are going to come in. There's like all these different things on the wall, like knives and hammers and a clock that looks like you can wind. And it's like, what is all this going to be about? It's just immediately like, you know, um, it just draws you in. It's like, I want to see what the hell all this stuff is. And um, yeah, I, 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 I played like the first 20 minutes of this game like four times and it's just like... <laughs> And most of that was within the demo, and now my proper playthrough. And it's just like I, I'm just so intrigued by it. Yeah, because it, it, I love mm. Pony Island. Yes, so. yes, and yeah. it's kind of as expected from the Pony Island devs, isn't it? The, the, mm-hmm. It's not just this game that there is this wider thing going on. That's also also part of the game that you need to sit there mm-hmm. and figure out. It is. It's it's sat as my um as like my next purchase. Um, okay. I was very close to um taking on Darkest Dungeon two uh, mm. the other day and picking that up. But I think Inscription just sits above it because it's it, it's it's out. It's a full release. It's the full package. Darkest Dungeon I can jump into probably any time within the next year uh, before mm. it, it's it's kind of full release when I want to jump into yeah. that. So yeah, Inscription is definitely again for me really high on the on the list of something else to uh, that I, I want to get to yeah. this year. I just want to like fake my own death for like one day and just like <laughs> hide under a blanket and play it. And... <laughs> Done. We'll help you tomorrow. Sorted. Yeah. We, 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 I just turn your webcam off at the thing. She's gone. She's not here anymore. Yeah. Goodbye. Um... But yeah, that's that's that was yeah, literally all I've pretty much played. I just wanted to quickly just shout out to a game. I saw it on itch first of all, but it's also on Steam. I'm just looking at it because it's, it's a long title. It's called. It's called Travelers. If on a winter's night for travelers. Um, so just put that into Google. Um, Itch.io or Steam. It's basically mm. just this uh, series of like four, four or five vignettes. Um, just lovely pixel art. Incredible pixel art. I. It's free as well. So go and play that i took the devs like two quid i think it was i think when i wanted to buy it it was on like that steam the last steam sale and i was just like here i give you two quid get the art book or whatever because the art's just like incredible like incredibly evocative and um like uh, atmospheric art what they do for like the lighting and the pixels and yeah it's 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 probably about a one and a half two hour experience um, nice so yeah go play that nice good, yeah. good. I will um, we will roll into then uh, a chat I think about anime and I, I think that will probably lead us into the end of the episode I think maybe Forza Horizon 5 which released today mm-hmm. um, which everyone can go to our Twitch channel and I assume at some point our YouTube channel to watch Adol's first looks um, playthrough of it, which you did a few hours of it earlier yeah. today um, to see sort of the beginning of the game and stuff. You know, it's it's one that I think all of us are probably going to play at some point. Oh yeah, um, I'm just waiting for my Forza machine to arrive. Exactly. Once you <laughs> once once that box has arrived, you can <laughs> get into it. Lots so the fridge is uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> It's maybe something we'll return to next week to uh, talk about. Um, you know, maybe a bit more in depth once we've all had a little bit of time um, to, just, just to play through. Just quickly, did it did it launch okay, Abil, after your issues? Yeah, I mean, it's a hundred gigs first of all, like 100, uh, 120 gig. All those yeah. assets. I'm um, not surprised. Um, and Ouch. so, mm. and my internet was, nah, I was only getting like eight megabits down from the Xbox app, um, which sucks. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. then it turns out my internet was acting up. Basically the stream came, went on, came on at three, 
40 instead of 12 because this <laughs> download was taking so long. I'm like, oh, fuck it. I'll just postpone to one. No, three. But then I, at, from three to 340, I was just dealing with it not turning on, resetting my internet. The internet got back up. But it, my like, I, I think the Xbox app just doesn't have good servers because I grabbed another thing while I was trying to sort out um, like or it's a starting up and crashing uh, and it was um, still only getting 6 megs down but my internet was finally back up to 80 um, so that's a warning to those who want to get something super big like mm. start it the day yeah. before yeah. <laughs> do it overnight yeah. um, but uh, yeah in the end I uh, Lucy sent me a few helpful links it says it doesn't like discord it doesn't like OBS these are the things we stream open with, <laughs> um, but uh, I, it worked with me starting it, running it in admin mode. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Um, Just good for people to know if they want to. Uh, but I'm the sure one thing things will be patched by then. Yeah, yeah, the one thing I will say is, um, uh, sorry, I might have another sneeze coming on. Nope. Yep. Uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, so uh, if you are going to stream it, for example, I couldn't, like, game capture on OBS wouldn't see it at all. Mm. Just black screen. So, which I think has something to do with the weird... Ah, oh, damn it. Um... <laughs> This is the disease podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah. Forza Horizon Five gives you the sneezes. It's an it's it's the latest vector of COVID. Uh, Game Pass. Uh, so, so um, Mexican pollen. Yeah. From all the beautiful um, flowers yeah, you so, <laughs> I will say, prepare yourself for fiddling, especially if, especially if you're on okay. Game Pass. Oh. Not diddling. I'm not sure. Fiddling. I was going to say. I'm not sure. <laughs> all, right, all right. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're not talking about the game now, so um, yeah, yeah. It, we'll talk about it. I think, as you say, but I do think good like, to speak about it when yeah. we, all of us have played it. So yeah, yeah so but I, I will support the like it has day one issues. Mm -hmm. uh, it also like kept disconnecting. It kept giving me the hey, you're disconnected. You're gonna go into solo play in the seven, five, four, three, two, oh, apparently you're back connected again, like, all of the time. <laughs> I mean, that's part of the course these days. I mean, uh, never play I mean, game day one. Your next code shouldn't at, be this flimsy. <laughs> there's, there's someone at Microsoft's data center going, oh, the server's crashed. Dick. Oh, the server crashed again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, that server there. crashed. Yeah. <laughs> just just one, just one servers. intern, one intern going absolutely nuts. Yeah. Like, oh shit, reset. Oh, I, oh, there's there's, go. there's oh. one guy who's trying to stream it on OBS. God damn it, he keeps ruining this fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, perfect, perfect. Let's yeah. move on from then. Uh, uh, Forza Horizon Five, which we will return to next week in, in a few weeks time depending on how much mm. we've had uh, to put into it uh, but adam we'll, we'll we'll leave the floor you know got you got 20 minutes we'll, we'll leave the floor <laughs> open to you to chat yeah. a little bit about anime and that's yeah. not nearly enough time to talk yeah, about then, anything then, anime then adam uh, pulls out a script of a, his favorite episode and just reads it because yeah. he's got 20 minutes so when you cut the starting and entering like the starting and, and finishing the scene thongs it's about 20 minutes it's just, it's just goku powering up and a couple of characters chatting in the background that's it i've recently started watching dragon ball super so i am well aware of the power of terribleness nice, nice. Yeah, it's, it's it's fun though. <laughs> it's fun. What though. anime? <laughs> I mean, the, the 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 catalyst for this was the the other week I watched the uh, Star Wars Visions, mm. which mm. is uh, you know Disney and Lucas film arts, look at whatever the Lucas thing we majig that Disney owns. It's just Disney now, isn't it? They still have the label. Like it's yeah. just like a it's like a division in the same way that Marvel is a division, yeah, yeah. It's one thing sort of as a label. Uh, then I think it's what? Lucasfilm. Yeah. Okay, Lucasfilm. So they basically approached quite a few different anime studios in Japan, quite famous ones for the most part, uh, to do their own short stories, uh, and whatever style they chose, basically in the Star Wars universe. Brackets vaguely, <laughs> I guess. 
it was take Star Wars and do a cool thing, uh, mm. you know. And uh, so there's nine episodes. Each one is by a different studio. There's a couple that are the same studio, but it's different directors, so different styles. Because hmm. uh, Studio Trigger has two. Uh, just as an example, there's two episodes that are done by them, and uh, and that prompted me to write a little article again for the site, which you, you know, go check out. And from two, three weeks ago, yeah, whatever. about two, yeah, about two weeks ago, yeah, yeah but about, about mm. two weeks ago, and, you know, you search for my name or search for Star Wars Visions, you'll find it on the site easy enough. Uh, about how it, it basically showcases all the stuff that I enjoy about anime as a medium why why I gravitate towards it as a, a thing as opposed to regular live action television for the most part I don't mm. really watch anything much anymore that or that is just regular TV um, and you know they picked some of the best talent in the world to do uh, some Star Wars stuff with in, in an animated medium. I take it you've all seen Star Wars Visions? No? No, no. yeah, no. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, no. Spoil it for me, because I'll never watch it. I mean, sure I've heard good things. <laughs> yeah. And for some reason, I heard good things and then started watching Dragon Ball Super. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. Is it on Disney uh, Plus? Yes, it is. Yeah, and the problem yeah. with Disney Plus is that I just watch The Simpsons. The problem with Disney Plus is I don't have it. That's also a problem, yeah. <laughs> the, but I the... do have kissanime.com.ru or whatever it is. <laughs> Kiss anime. <laughs> uh, is that not shut down? <laughs> uh, yes, I, uh, I, I did not say an actual <laughs> URL there. Yeah. Oops. It's <laughs> right, uh, the internet police aren't watching, it's fine. <laughs> I should hold it. <laughs> yeah, but the well, I, I won't go into any particular details, and now I mean, they, I I'd say watch it first. The, I mean, the, there isn't very much to spoil about them, kind of story wise, because they're you know they're they're self contained little short stories. It's not like they impact on Star Wars as a universe in any particular way. Uh, yeah, they're not they're, they're not they're canon, canon right? Chronicle, right? Yeah, yeah they're, they're they're not canon. So, and again. Depending on the approach of the particular director and the you know the team that decided for each one, so some of them are could fit within the canon. There's in a sort of well over here in this corner of the galaxy, at, you know whatever time this could have happened, sort of thing. Uh, and some of them are way more outlandish and some poke a bit of fun at the whole thing. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, in a, in a, in a Kind of in a nice way, <laughs> you know, in, in a way that only anime can. Uh, like uh, one of Studio Trigger's ones uh, called The Twins, which I think is episode three. I want to say. How, how, where... how many episodes is it before you go on? Yeah, the, there's nine in nine. total. Nine. Sorry, I think yeah. I yeah. And like the, the Twins is good because it takes all of the, the kind of fundamental elements of Star Wars and it just dials them up to 11. And sort of takes them to the sort of ridiculous extreme but you know so it kind of pokes fun at, at the tropes and the stylings of star wars but it does it in a in a very nice way that creates this great visual spectacle that still has that bit of heart and love in it somewhere somehow that <laughs> you know the you know you can't, yeah because you know some of the visuals in that are ridiculous and if you try to do them in a live action film, <laughs> the prequels, <clears throat> they would look utterly terrible <laughs> in every possible way. Uh, but when you do them in animation, it looks absolutely fantastic and I loved it. <laughs> and uh, Kyle uh, Barrett, who writes for the site regularly, he hi also highlighted uh, the twins in particular mm. because he loves how it it doesn't fit with this within Star Wars. It just does its own crazy thing, as opposed to some of the other ones that would fit more in the universe that you could kind of slot in as a live action show and mm. not have to change too many elements, and it would still work. Uh, 
you know, he, he likes the fact that it takes it in that kind of crazy, fun direction and just has a good time with it instead of trying to fit in. Uh, and, you know, again, we'll read his article for his thoughts on that because it's very good. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's really... It would really help if you did watch it. <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose, I, I suppose it's, the, it's the joy of uh, um, almost kind of like how... Uh, maybe not necessarily well i suppose it is the uh, uh kind of the, the the sellout to disney in them wanting to diversify slightly and wanting to do other things and i i wonder how much this kind of stuff would have happened had they have not started up their own sort of streaming service and seeing you know netflix having their uh, kind of originals picking up like black mirror and stuff uh, and then having um love death and robots and those kinds of things and someone at disney went right we've absolutely got star wars as a franchise which can fit this kind of thing into it so we're not just putting out this new release we've got all of these people who love the words star wars who will kind of come and watch this you know we, we've already got yeah. a base to be able to sort of bring this in but that doesn't stop our studios and the people that we're going out to from sort of putting their own take on it. And with the twins, them essentially saying, cool, uh, strange force ghost space force thing that some people can have and laser swords. Yeah, we'll run with that. We'll do what the fuck we like with yeah. it. And, you know, and being able to kind of take sort of what they want. We've got these shows like The Mandalorian and there's the Obi-Wan show and the the live action things which yeah. maybe tie in a little bit more anime and at least like visions feels like and essentially like how the animatrix did with the matrix was, films yeah. it's like you want, to, you want to tell some fucking crazy stories sure just get someone to yeah. fucking draw them <laughs> well yeah uh, i mean i also think just tagging onto ben's point which is like I think someone has finally realized that, like, yes, there are diehard canon. Well, actually, there's no way that you could have a purple sword <laughs> because the, there's no purple kyber crystals. Um, you know, that asshole. People don't exist. <laughs> but, but a lot of the people want to see grubby space setting with slightly robish figures and swords that glow. Um, so. And like, is and it's and like, it's not that these non-canonical um, takes are like. Now there's unicorns in Star Wars. Wait, uh, Adam, uh, I haven't watched it. Or is there <laughs> a unicorn? I mean, it would obviously be I like mean, a saber on on its head, the, like a horse uh, which just goes and like twerks its ass, and then it goes. <laughs> I mean, you know, there isn't that specifically. Ah, uh, <laughs> like Horses on and of Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but, like, w w to, to actually get on the point, uh, like... Um, I'm just going off with Ewoks cartoon. Uh, I know nothing about Star Wars. Uh, that is my <laughs> own... We, we, want, we want the basics to be okay. there, but yeah. actually not worrying about canon means you can have another sith person you know because the you don't have to worry about the there can only be two sith at one time and actually if you look at the timelines that we have in star wars all the spots have been taken for a long time <laughs> right like you don't have to worry about that shit you can just be like yeah. ah cool <laughs> you're a sith and i'm a non-sith and yeah. a judith or whatever they're called and then you know, and then they fight, and you get to see wow, wow, smash, smash, cool. You know, like it's like getting anime people to do your Lego Star Wars fights, essentially, mm -hmm. right? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, absolutely. And Star Wars Visions is a good place to start with with anime in particular because you get nine very different styles of anime. You get, mm. you get different art styles, you get different storytelling styles, and you get a good cross section of the potential options available to you so you could watch uh, again the example of the twins it's done by studio trigger and the, what i would recommend to you is if you haven't watched any anime is google studio trigger and pick something else they've made 
mm. and watch that or the director uh, you know or as well because again they tend to have particular styles that so things made by the same studio can look slightly different because it's different directors and blah 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 you know all that sort of stuff depending on how granular you want to get with it but the chances are if you liked a particular episode if you check out stuff made by that studio you'll probably find something that looks visually appealing to you mm-hmm. and mm. then read the synopsis and give it a go <laughs> from there or don't read the synopsis because sometimes you're better not knowing <laughs> and just go for it um, it's and sometimes, like sometimes and you'd let no even less. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and sometimes with anime, the synopsis is wholly different to what you're actually getting. Yeah, because th- that's just part of the problem. Sometimes is when you boil anime down to a synopsis, quite often it entirely misses the point of the thing. Yeah. So, like one of the best anime like that I've watched in the last year or so is a show called Toramiya, which is basically just a slice of life sort of romance between like a bunch of high school students and normally that's not a story that you know particularly draws me in in any sort of way because you know it's not the sort of media i usually go for if it was live action i would have ignored it probably mm-hmm. you know <laughs> you don't watch neighbors every week no not even close no <laughs> The neighbors. Oh, I don't even watch my real neighbors. <laughs> my, my nan watches neighbors and I catch some of it and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. But so, so you know, like as a synopsis on its own, that whatever the description it would give you that sort of boils that down that it's or the or the the genre tags or whatever doesn't really sound like something that would be in my kind of wheelhouse, but. Cloverworks, the studio that uh, made it, made it absolutely heckin' beautiful. Mm. <laughs> and it's just an absolutely gorgeous show to watch. Even mm. though, you know, it's Can not... You spell it? It's H-O-R-I M-I-Y-A or one Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank and, you. Yeah, it, it just it looks incredible. It's a great show to watch and on top of that there is also a great story in there with excellent characters and all the rest of it it has all of those things that back that up but what drew me to it was the fact that i caught like a little clip of it on twitter somewhere and thought oh that looks actually quite good so when it appeared on funimation uh which i have a subscription to you know i just started watching it and that that's a perfectly good way of finding anime a lot of the time is getting into it that way mm. Uh, Published by Square Enix, the manga. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so it's based mm. on a, a manga, and again, of course, in in Adil's way, the, the manga is better uh, because, of course, <laughs> it, <'cause, laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's the, just a fact. Yeah, the the show is thirteen episodes long, and the manga is however many. Quadrillion mm. chapters long, or whatever. billions <laughs> of years. Yeah, of, of course, of course, it's better. Like that's just how it goes. Uh, but you know, the, the manga doesn't move. <laughs> 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 and, and as much as, of course, you, you know, one, one of, it, yeah, one of yeah. the reasons the anime looks good will be because the artwork, the original artwork in the manga, it's drawing from will be good as well. Of course, you mm. know, all that goes into it. But you know that I would highly recommend the anime just based on the fact that looking at it is great, even if you don't like anything else about it. Uh, even though I ended up falling in love with the whole thing like a stupid idiot. <laughs> um, and then the other thing that that I enjoy about anime, which comes a little bit, that goes a little bit with like Kyle's point about the twins taking Star Wars in its own kind of goofy direction. Is the there's a show I recently watched called uh, Miss Kobayashi's uh, Dragon Maid, <laughs> which is completely off the wall, uh, typical anime weirdness uh, and silly, and it takes it doesn't take anything particularly seriously. It doesn't take the fantasy genre particularly seriously. It doesn't take dragons mm. particularly seriously. You know, and it does all of the typical weird anime stuff that a lot of them do. You know, and it plays around with that stuff 
but what it does do is it, it takes the character seriously and so yeah. even amongst the quite light-hearted and funny and, and all the rest of it and again uh, Kyoto Animation that did that it's very nice looking show as well uh, but in amongst all of that they, and as much as they have jokes and it is very silly they, they treat the character seriously in the heart of it so when you get to the end and they do actually have a bit of a you know we're going to actually have an emotional moment for a change that's actually about something it lands because they did that from the start even though all the rest of it is kind of silly and and not very serious mm -hmm. and there's a bit of that in like the twins you know it, it sort of takes the character seriously even though they're dialed up to a ridiculous level there's still something in there that you know you can connect to on a sort of genuine level even mm. though the rest of it is just it is mostly about the oh flashy swords way isn't that cool looking but there is stuff still that little bit of something to connect to in it as well and anime is a medium that that does that really well in a way that live action often doesn't i think uh, it's not just it's not just that live action doesn't it that, that lots of other mediums don't do that you know games don't do that we don't see you know many games even if they're split up episodically it is genuine it, 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 generally a continuation of what has come before you know with the telltale games mm. always very similar even though they're, they're in this episodic sort of sense there's not many yeah. studios out there going here is a you know uh, an art style and a narrative that we're going to present in this way and then for episode two, we're going to do something completely different. And for that, you, know, you do get studios who will move game to game to game to game and, and try new things and do different things. But there's usually a big gap between their releases because they need the time to be able to do that. Anime can give you something slightly different in that regard, that you're getting an episode of this and then another episode which isn't linked to that previous one but it comes under the same kind of moniker uh, um, but is made by someone different and gives you something else um, it, it, it seems like a an area which is almost not, not necessarily shunned by lots of other uh, uh, kind of similar sorts of uh, media and stuff but it, it, it's kind of one that I suppose at least in sort of like the UK isn't picked up on you know as much you know we don't have many channels over here showing kind of anime and those sorts of things you've got to go to subscription services you've got to pick them up on different sort of uh, media you know blu-rays dvds and that sort of thing yeah. uh, or, or go to specific streaming services to kind of get them Yet there's so many kind of advantages to 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 them. You know, we, we currently we've got a live action Cowboy Bebop coming very soon to Netflix, Netflix yeah. and and Cowboy Bebop is one of my favorite animes ever, and it's only like thirteen episodes long. It's it, like, incredibly short. There's a movie as well, and it, it just yeah. tells this very kind of like concise. It's like, ha, done. Don't worry about it anymore. This is it. Yeah, I mean, I think that's why I like anime is because there's like either thirteen or twenty six episode run, and they kind of know, or it's like a Shonen Jump style One Piece Dragon Ball thing. In which case, it's like, well, strap in, motherfuckers! This is gonna take <laughs> hundreds of episodes, and if you yeah. still like it, well, One Piece is about to hit episode one thousand, I think. Fucking like. Hell. Yeah. It's it's just like, but like you know what you're getting into if you start watching One Piece, but yeah. also even when One Piece started, you knew this is if it if it's good, it's going to last hundreds of episodes. But most anime, if you're lucky and it's good, there's like oh the manga kept going and here's season two, but also yeah. because of just the way like the the structure works. Everything, even if it's multiple seasons, it's still like a conquer twenty six episodes because they just never know, and they won't know for a couple years afterwards probably whether there's going to be a season two. Yeah, so like massive. Yeah. 
so, so it, like yeah. there's gaps between and you just have to be okay with that which means they have to write endings yes <laughs> because yeah, it might be things. over yeah. and i really value that because like one yeah. of the things that sucks about like especially american style like live action television is it's 24 episode seasons uh episodes a season and like that worked for one series really well but by series two the writers are all, like no like so there's like series don't do well when they have to pad it out to 24 episodes yeah and they can't do and they do it year on year in a row and that's why you get like stale stagnant shows yeah the, the, the cw's uh dc stuff is a good example of that for me because i watched you know like the early seasons of arrow mm. and then and then the flash and I got so far in, and then I just started falling off all of their shows. And the reason that that started to happen is because what they had was one excellent writing team. Mm. Who they did like season one and two of Arrow, and then they moved on to the Flash. So season three of Arrow started ah. dipping and right. dipping and dipping. And then they did a couple of seasons of the Flash, and then they moved on to whatever the next one was that they started up. Supergirl or. Doom yeah, what, or like, whatever. whichever one it was, I can't remember yeah. anymore. It was years ago now at this point, <laughs> and you know, I started falling off of those shows, kind of one by one, and realized that it had all of the problems of the fact that they were padding out stuff to the twenty-four episodes all the time to make it a full season because they're locked into that style because it's on TV in America, mm. and the fact that they didn't have the writing talent to maintain so many different shows that were interlinked with one another and mm. keep them all at that good quality level uh, so yeah that, that the, what as you said I, I think one of the good things about anime is it doesn't really fit into that if they have only nine episodes worth of material they make nine <laughs> or they make ten mm. or they make thirteen you know they don't yeah. necessarily have to make twenty four and the ones that make you know like 24 or 26 episodes for a season or whatever tend to be ones that have long-running manga series like your shonen jobs like one piece like dragon ball like mm. my hero academia and stuff like that. they already know they're big and popular because the manga sell millions of copies <laughs> mm. and they have several hundred chapters and blah, blah blah and they've been ongoing for all this time so they know that there's there's a fan base there for those so they can get away with just adapting them into that and then even even then saying that like my hero academia season one is only 13 episodes and that first season basically is you know it, it boils kind of the entire show down into that that first little arc and gives mm -hmm. you you know there's that great kind of introductory like three or four episodes that sort of sets everything up and by the end of that you know whether you like the show or not and the story it's going to tell you and then in the 13 episodes you know or not whether you're in this to go to the end or not yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and i like that that styling you know as i was saying and the, the other thing with anime is with the, a lot of them being adaptations you don't need to filter out that some of them are adapted purely to sell more of the manga by putting it in front of more people mm -hmm. because they, they deliberately adapt one 13 episode season or or whatever on the with the cliffhanger ending going but there's a manga <laughs> uh, right or or they adapt the whole thing and give you you know your your long running show or the, that's manga went from here to here and that's where it stopped and so we have adapted that into a story on anime for you you know, so you have those kind of different tiers of stuff you can filter some of those ones out um, but by and large yeah they, they either make you a, a nice story or or they don't <laughs> <laughs> they, they, you know nice good uh, let's finish there this week then uh, uh, you lot want to hear about my experience with anime yeah go you, for it yeah that's it <laughs> <laughs> Well done. <laughs> this conversation. Um, <laughs> perfect, perfect. Let's jump then back. We're, we're coming straight back to you, Lucy. You opened mm. the show with the beer. Let's talk about our beers for uh, a minute or two and uh, we will finish. So, yeah. Lucy, I think we know, but mm. beers. 
yeah, obvious winner. Uh, alluded to it before. It is the tea and biscuits from Wiper and True. Um, quite honestly, uh, probably wouldn't buy. Uh, I wouldn't say either of these beers. Definitely not the beer de saison from mm. uh, Wiper and not Wiper and True from the Colonel. Colonel. That, that was just too much like a cider for me. Um, as I said, the start of the taste, it's like yes. This is very saison y, almost going into like kind of Gers Lambic kind of territory, but then it just just quickly gets taken over by um, very tart, apple, fizzy, cider like uh, taste, which is not to my liking. If you like cider, check that beer out. Because um, mm. you may find whatever you're looking for in a cider you might find in that as well so yeah n- not 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 one it was an interesting experiment and it's like just didn't work on me but mm-hmm. you know like that doesn't speak to the quality of the kernel that's fine like, yeah it's like i love their beers um i want more of them i had a like mosaic wheat ale from them the other day and it was fantastic just so subtle and just so simple just like wiper and true without having to do a lot um mm. yeah the old grey was not too overpowering um just quite subtle um and yeah it was a decent beer uh, if I wanted a you know another beer I probably wouldn't pick that up but it's just like it was it was nice to sip on it's a nice refreshing drink to, to have um, but I think if I want to taste uh, if I want to go for like something that's more beery wouldn't get that, but yeah. Okay. Uh, the tea and biscuits, interesting beer, good beer. That's my favourite this week. Nice, good. Uh, Adam, how about you? Uh, I think I like them both. Uh, I think I'm gonna go for the Wild Beers Peel Breaker Grapefruit Session Ale. Hmm. They were both kind of lighter than you would think for what they are, right? Because this, uh, sorry, Session Eight IPA. So it was a four point seven ipa but it held its own really well it had really strong still some boisterous flavors even at that lower percentage uh i really liked the the interplay between the pininess and the the like the citrus especially because it was like grapefruit like kind of rind and zest and then a bit of sweet tangerine as well like it just it came all across as a really interesting package uh and the whiplash the sup uh, porter was really good, especially for a five percent porter. But I, I mean, I said this is a great porter to give to people who may or may not who are interested in trying porters or darker beers, but have not really like done that before. I have done that before, and <laughs> I like it, and I like my porters with a lot, a little more punch and like a, a lot more depth in those flavors. So while I applaud what the sup is doing, it's just not. It's it, like I literally don't think it's meant for me. Sure. I I think it's a good beer. So when I say I'm choosing the uh, peel breaker over it, and that's because I would have the peel breaker again easily. But I think the sup is an excellent beer for the purpose I, I described before. Mm. Mm. Give someone a porter if they're not sure. If they're like, I don't know if I like porters. It's like, well, this will tell you. Uh, if you like this, but think I wouldn't want much more of this. This is the only porter you should have. <laughs> but if you like this, you're like, oh, those flavors. I'm super interested in them. Then have more porters. That's like, fair. it's re- it's it's good at what it does. It's just what it does isn't what I want. <laughs> no, yeah, that's a, that's fair. A fair take this week. Um, I'm also going to pick the Wiper and True uh, from the two beers that I had, which was the Kiwi Lilt. Uh, super easy beer, incredibly easy. Lots of flavor in there. Um, the Arbor, I think, was just too big on the end. Like that, that, that bitter, ashy finish was just a bit too much. Uh, normally, I like a big bit of finish, but this was maybe a little bit too harsh. Um, and that's, I think, only because the front end was really weak. So there wasn't a huge amount of fruity flavour to it. There wasn't much there. It was just 
kind of here's a bit and now here is this big bitter ashy finish to it uh, it lent really into that so there wasn't a very good balance there between um, you know that that start which disappeared really quickly the kiwi lip was just was just easy it's so nice it's so fruity and sweet uh, and and just it's an easy easy pale to knock back um, and it's a shame that I haven't seen it you know much over the last say year 18 months it's only just appeared again uh, after having mm. it, you know or at least they definitely put out a beer if not titled Kiwi Lilt was very very similar and very very similarly titled as well if this is not a rebrew which I think it is but I haven't had it for a, a, a while and it just it, again it provides that balance that nuance that Wiper and True bring to uh, to beers so uh, a big big week for Wiper and True mm. um, perfect we will finish there then this week there have been the beers that we have drank they are the games that we have played as well Adam thank you very much for joining us this week uh, thanks for having me uh, absolutely it's always, a, it's always fun yeah yeah and, 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 and again whenever you want to come on and talk about random stuff absolutely <laughs> no problem at all I told you ad hoc agenda adjustments <laughs> <laughs> that's what I bring to the table <laughs> and it's perfect it's good it's, yeah. it, it, it's nice to lean into something else every now and again as well uh, if everybody wants to chat to us we are at tanked up cast over on the socials or you can go to outoflives.net to look at the articles uh, um, that all of us have put up Lucy I think you've got a review coming very soon Adam you've put up a few bits uh, in the last few weeks so there's loads of stuff over there for people to get into you can also see our faces there and that will direct you through to the YouTube on uh, Out of Lives to see our faces, the beers that we have drank as well. You can also join us each and every week on Twitch, where we stream live, where Adol also plays, as he has done with Forza Horizon 5, uh, every almost every week uh, with his first looks stream as well. Uh, um, subscribe, like, tell a friend, put it in your mailbox, send it to space, I don't know, do whatever you want with you know all of the electronic likes, clicks, thumbs, hearts could you do that on your telephone bit? you can do it yeah on your telephone exactly it's <laughs> gone into space um, I, I've definitely been watching too much fucking Star Trek uh, <laughs> it's a good place to say we have been tanked up <laughs> goodbye bye bye ciao www.outoflives.net